Hello everybody. Today we're going to talk about World War II identification tags that were made of iron and that are usually very rusty when we find them, and some ideas I had to see if it might be possible to read these ID tags despite the rust. So World War II German ID tags are normally made of either aluminum or zinc, and it usually remains in reasonably good condition when buried in the ground, even for several decades. So you can usually read the inscriptions on these ID tags. And then every now and then you have an ID tag made of stainless steel, and those literally remain brand new and you see them, it's as if they were never even buried for a single day. And then late in the war, the Germans had the very bad idea to start making ID tags out of iron. So this is something that you can find in something like 5 or 10% of cases for soldiers who died late in the war. And of course, making an ID tag of iron is a very bad idea because iron will rust and then the inscriptions become impossible to read. And for German soldiers, this is a huge problem because ID tags are usually the only method that's used to identify these soldiers. There's no DNA or teeth uh, no comparisons or anything like that that's done. So if a guy has an ID tag that's not readable, he's simply going to remain unidentified forever and that's it. So what I what I had always heard from diggers was that these iron ID tags are impossible to read and whatever method was tried to, to clean them up or whatever did not work and these ID tags were just unusable. And I decided to test this myself and see if anything could be done with various methods. So my first idea was to do an x-ray of the ID tag. I've used x-rays in the past successfully to see what's inside wallets without damaging them. I also used them for example for this Italian ID tag. You see this ID tag has been wrapped up like a mick wrap apparently to be able to put it inside a bottle that was then put on a soldier's grave and this id tag i got x-rayed and you can see that the result is very nice you can uh, read what's written on the internal parts of the tag that are invisible from outside so i brought this uh, german iron id tag i have um, to uh, a place where they have x-rays and the guys x-rayed it and the result is absolutely horrible because uh, unlike the Italian ID tag that's made of brass, this German ID tag is made of iron, which is much less radiolucent than, uh, than brass, and you literally can't see anything. So x-rays tried and unsuccessful result. Then uh, I, was, I, I was told, how about bringing this to the archaeology museum and seeing what they can suggest. So I went to the archaeology museum and uh, spoke to the restorers, and what they usually use uh, with this kind of rusted iron is a kind of machine like a sandblasting machine that instead of using sand it uses these tiny little glass balls that are projected against the iron at high speed and by doing this gradually and slowly they can clean off the rust and then see the original surface of the metal and if there's any artwork or patterns or anything these can become visible again. So the restorer was pretty confident that his method was going to work. So I brought the ID tag to the museum and he spent one hour uh, cleaning both sides of it. And once again, the result was very bad. The restorer was uh, disappointed. And the only thing that may have become visible was one letter that you can see here. It looks like a J. But like I explained in an old video called Big Problems with German ID tags, is that these ID tags don't have names written on them. They have a unit and then a number and the usual thing is that you have to be able to see each and every number and if one number is invisible or damaged then the ID tag pretty much becomes unusable and so having one single letter visible does not help at all for German ID tags. So the archaeology museum had uh, nothing else to, to suggest and then uh, I had a last idea which was uh, something done by the scientific police which is serial number restoration. So the police often have the issue that people file off serial numbers from weapons or from cars. And then they have this method they use called serial number restoration, which is you take the place where the number was filed away, you file it down and polish it down until it becomes uh, like a mirror, basically. And then they apply acid to that location, and then the numbers can become visible again. But this is a method that's used for, like I said, weapons or car serial numbers. So it means thick metal with deeply stamped uh, letters that were filed off. And this situation is actually 
completely different from what we have for the German ID tag, because the German ID tag, what we have is letters that are only lightly stamped by hand in extremely thin metal, and then these letters are not filed off. The, the metal is rusty, and that's why they're not visible. So this is a completely different situation. And when we looked at the ID tag, to be honest, we already knew like this serial number restoration thing is not going to work. But we decided to do it anyways, just as a test to see what would happen. So the policeman applied the, the, his uh, mixture of acid to both sides of the tag several times. And no, we couldn't see a thing afterwards. So this method also is not valid for these World War II ID tags. So uh, neither the archaeology museum uh, nor the scientific police had any other suggestions of methods that might work. I also don't have any other ideas or suggestions. So it seems that, yeah, for these German iron ID tags, the rust actually destroys the surface of the tag, destroys the shape of the letters, and uh, whatever method you try, you won't find anything, as far as I can see. So unless somebody comes up with some kind of miracle idea, Apparently, it's true that these rusted iron ID tags simply cannot be read anymore. They're undecodable, and so their owners will remain unknown, their identity lost forever, because of a stupid and irresponsibly designed identification tag. So that's it for today, and as usual, if you want to contact me, you can uh, send me emails at this address. Have a nice day, and bye-bye.